Let's get a political aspect of this incredible recall. Joining me from the action where it happened from the Gazette in the Springs, uh, Megan Schrader, thank you for being here. Thank you. And from the Denver Post, who's been covering all the gun issues, Curtis Lee. Thanks for having me. All right, not a whole lot of time. Let's jump into it. Were you surprised about the election results? Let's I start think here. that everyone was surprised. I mean, Republicans were surprised that they won in Pueblo uh, by that wide margin um, that 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 more that Heron was ousted. I think Democrats were definitely surprised. Um, obviously, going into this recall, they're, they're on both sides. We everyone thought it would be close, but but to see the, the margin that that Heron lost in Pueblo, I think that was that definitely was, a shocker. That was a shocker. How how big is this victory? I mean, talk to me about politics. Um, what's what's the reaction? What's the wave afterwards? Well, when you think about in terms of Senator John Morse, he was the sitting Senate president. You know, he set the tone for the Senate. You know, the he was the leader of, of what legislation got pulled up when. And the fact that he's not going to be there next year is huge. And the fact that they're going to have to pick someone to replace him, um, it definitely has sent shockwaves through. What are you hearing from, let's, first let's do the, the fun part. What are you hearing from Republicans? As a guy who supported these recalls and was excited about them, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I think this sends a wave to every other state legislator in the western states. You know, you want to take on the gun issue, you want to become a puppet for Bloomberg, you might want to think twice about it. Is, Am I reading that right, or is that just my my youthful enthusiasm? Well, I think Colorado was definitely a litmus test for the national gun debate, and uh, just here in Colorado, obviously, two state senators being recalled. Republicans feel like this is momentum; that this sets a message, like, "Hey, Democrats overreached in the legislature that you know, and and their constituents held their feet to the fire and and essentially ousted two sitting state lawmakers." They feel like this is a kind of ammo per se going into 2014, where you have a race with. John on Hickenlooper, and it, it also sets the tone for other Western states who might be considering uh, passing tougher gun laws. I've heard some skepticism, though, that this can be replicated elsewhere. You know, these are two pretty conservative areas um, who they clearly had at one time elected Democrats, but um, is that going to be, you know, could this happen in another district that, say, was less conservative? where gun rights are not such a passionate issue with the electorate. Um, I don't know, but there, I've heard some skepticism that it's um, you know, not a telling election per se. Not a telling Statewide. election, how State, in the Statewide world? Statewide or even yeah. na nationwide, you know? No, this is a telling election no matter how you look at it. You can try to downplay this any way you like, taking out a sitting president of the Senate yeah. and taking out a senator, a committee chairwoman, from a two to one democratic stronghold in the state that has always been a democratic stronghold, this, this sends, sends a shudder. It's not, not a big surprise that Harry Reid said, you know what, we're not touching we're not touching guns even on, on, a, on a federal level. What are, what are Democrats saying? And the fact that I, I, Democrats are definitely, this is the biggest loss they've had in the state in almost a decade. I mean, usually they're winning yeah, statewide well, elections. They're winning. Welcome to what I uh, feel like all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to our world. Exactly. Yeah. So this is kind of shaking them up. And I mean, opponents to this recall raised uh, a lot more money than the proponents of the recall. I mean, I think they raised around $3 million compared to the 550000 that opponents to the recall call raised. So, I mean, a lot of money poured into this locally and nationally. And and, you know, Democrats wanted to save these seats, and it kind of goes back to that idea of early on, once these recalls were on the ballot, I mean, uh, and, and were certified, John Morris could have had, and Angela Heron could have looked to resign their seats, had Democrats um, a vacancy committee replace them. It, and it, I mean, it came right down to the personalities of the arrogance of these legislators, the arrogance of how John Morse ran these gun bills, how he, how he limited testimony, how they didn't have any debate on the Senate floor, the Democrats. Uh, sat on their hands. I've never seen anything like that, and I think that kind of arrogance that I'm going to be able to win this. Am, am, am I off on that? Oh, <laughs> I'll just say it. you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to concur. Yes. But there's there was certainly a feeling that these guys were out of touch. That the process wasn't respected. Uh, am I off, right on that? Well, I think obviously they, they made a uh, number of constituents angry with how they handled the. The guns, um, you know, putting them through all through session on the same day. Clearly, it, it made people angry enough to get out and go to the polls. Um, and so I, I can't say that that wasn't a mistake. Um, you know, was there a better way to have handled it? Probably. Um, but, <laughs> no. but, I'm, but I'm, you know, but I'm also did... tired of hearing people say, oh, well, they changed the Senate rules. Because that's pretty much a lie. You know, yeah. and they, so yeah. they, they didn't change the Senate rules. 
I think that there was just kind of a misunderstanding of, of what the process was in the be committees. Like that I day. mean, each time, each each side had ample time. I mean, enough time to, to debate, equal amounts of time to debate the, the bills. Right, but and then when you're, what you're talking about, where Democrats didn't come to the well and challenge the Republicans who were essentially, you know, filibustering it in a sense. You know, the, these I've never seen that. These. I've never seen that in two decades. Uh, watching the Capitol, I've never seen proponents of a bill not come down and put on the record why they feel this bill should be should be passed and and, and answer some of the objections. I've never seen it. And before. sitting through that ten-hour debate, I can pinpoint one Democrat that came to the yeah. well. Mike Johnston Mike came Johnson. down and 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 gave a forceful response. He felt like he wanted to respond to to Senator Brophy um, on certain issue, on certain points that he made about uh, the gun legislation. So Johnston Mike went. Mike Johnston was went, the, went the rogue, lone Democrat. Went rogue. <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk about Hickam. Looper. Uh, this is going to be the big fight next year. This is in addition to a series of losses. I mean, the, I think he misunderstood um, how, how big this issue is. He ran the legislative session. He didn't veto a single bill. He mishandled the uh, uh, Nathan Dunlap um, non-decision. He didn't go either way. And now the pushback here, he only has a one-vote majority. And I think in his soul, he would like to have a one-vote minority. So <laughs> then he wouldn't have to have these silly bills reach his desk like he did for the first two years. How does this affect uh, Hick going into a um, into an election year? Um, I think next session is going to be fascinating to see the, the, how the oil and gas gets played because that'll be, you know, that's his real big issue that he's, you know, middle of the line on. You know, Democrats don't like him for his stance on it. You know, Republicans don't like him for his stance on it. So the, when those issues come up, it's going to be a real test next session. But that's going to be the only thing. Nothing is going to get done in this next session. Election year. Uh, it's an election yeah. year. Nobody's going to, you know, the Republicans will do lots of things that will get killed, but they'll try to make a stand. Um, One thing that's fascinating with it being an election year, I've, I've heard from a number of Republicans who have said they're going to reintroduce uh, they're going to bring up the issue of guns again, and they're going to look to repeal these bills and and see who in these committees, if they kill the kill it in committee, like who these lawmakers are, if they get to the floor, you know, what are the votes cast, and it's going to flow into 2013, I mean, or 2014. And I'll be interested to see too if rather than um, repeal efforts succeeding next mm -hmm. session, they they tweak the bills. Um, obviously, some of the bills were pretty poorly written. Really, the, you think so? The um, it, just a magazine in term bill that outlaws almost every <laughs> magazine in Colorado because it was so poorly written. I mean, the you know, it's if Hickenlooper has to twice, you know, alter his, you know, interpretation of the laws. Um, I think it leaves it open for, for, for those who don't get that. After these laws were passed. Hick had to say, well, this is how we're supposed to interpret it, which is not what the law says. And then the AG, thanks to our lawsuit, had to say, well, here are the technical rules we're going to enforce, which are in conflict to what the, the actual law says. Yeah. You know, um, so you, know, you, you have a governor who, after this, last week said, you know, I wasn't all that wild about the magazine bills to begin with. So why, why did he sign it if he wasn't all that wild? And at the end of the day, he did sign the bills, and he has to, to talk to voters about that. And in that press conference, uh, the governor said that he traveled around rural Colorado. He did a two-day tour early in August, and he, he met with constituents. And he said, you know, a majority of people were in favor of the background check bill. And I mean, that, that parlays with what polls show. But, and, I, and when asked you about it... Let me put out the prediction of after these floods, people who are trying to help one another who cannot store their guns at a friend's house without having to run, uh, find somebody who can do the background check for mere $10 during an emergency. I have a feeling that a lot of people might see that in the same way. There are technical problems. Not that the idea of universal background checks are a bad idea, but this bill was so poorly written, you're going to be hurting flood victims and actually you'll be hurting the people who want to help their friends and uh, neighbors out because they won't be able to say, yeah, you yeah. could, I, I'd love to take you in. But the guns have to stay outside. And that's a good point. I mean, they can't just, hey, John, here's my gun. You know, you can't do that under the, the bill. I mean, really. Well, you can. Yeah. You can loan up to, I think it's 10 days. You're much more Three of an expert. Three it's days. It's a very, yeah. very short window. And it, there's, you know, some concern of how that's going to be interpreted, you know, or is a. Heaven forbid it be interpreted the way it was, it was written. Um, does this make Hick vulnerable? Should Hick be nervous? 
I think the recent poll numbers show that, I mean, he's not doing well. A recent Quinnipiac poll showed that 45% of voters uh, feel he should be reelected, 48% feel he should not. Um, obviously, we're long off, a long ways off from, yeah, from November 2014, and, the, he, and he, things he can a, change. He has, a, he has an ace in his pocket. He'll be running against a Republican, <laughs> so the, he's, he's going to be in much better shape. Um, let's talk about the voting law as well. This voting law that was rushed in, which was supposed to come in effect next year, when they saw that the recall was coming, they made sure that it was in effect this year so that we could have mail-in ballots. It was libertarians who messed that up, and the mail-in ballots didn't show. How much difference do you think that made? I think it made a big difference. You know, I don't have the exact numbers, but John Morse didn't lose by much. Um, and if you look at Democrats tend to use and utilize mail-in ballots more than Republicans, and could that have gotten out some of his supporters who didn't make it to the polls? Possibly. Um, I think it had a big, big impact. The um, um, Angela Harone went on CNN and said, "Voter suppression." Yeah, yeah I lost by 10, 12 and point, 14 points. But voters, who was? Who was suppressed other than uh, me? Other Democrats, maybe. Yeah. That, that, uh, but still, obviously, with the poll number, with the the turnout in that district, obviously, Democrats were with, uh, a large portion of, of the folks who did, you know, vote Senator yeah. Harone out of office. And um, and and talking about the mail-in ballots, and it, it is one of those things where it, it did affect. Uh, uh, it, it kind of did affect them, but I mean, it was it was obviously not good for for Democrats. Yeah. And you know, on election day, I had people calling me because they saw my yeah. number in the the newspaper asking me, where do I go vote? My polling place is closed. I'm like, well, there's voting centers now. You know, <laughs> pe changed. there was a lot of confusion out there on election day about how to vote, who could vote. Um, well, let's talk about the fun part of gypsy voting as well, that this law changes to same day registration. I took advantage of that and moved down to uh, Pueblo, uh, Pueblo, El Paso County. I cast a blank ballot. I think I proved a point. I'm still at large, so <laughs> How I'm are ready. you feeling about yeah, that? Are you that? feeling a little nervous? Or uh, are you... I'm, I'm sweating every day, I tell you. <laughs> and, um, um, but there were people who on one side knew this law, knew that you could move in and do this. Hicks signed this law, and even, even if I was a felon for doing this, my vote would still count. There's no way to pull it out. Is Hick going to have to respond to this as well? Will it be, will it be fixed? There's been lots of calls um, to repeal House Bill 1303 um, that changed the voting laws. Uh, but I, I don't know. Um, it's just like any law. It can be abused. It, and can it? it <laughs> And legally, it, it no, it's not abused. Somebody can turn I their back voted on it. legally. So would, so could anybody else. Final thought. Um, the recalls were obviously historic. I mean, no state lawmaker has been recalled in the state of Colorado, and uh, the Senate president won't be back in 2014. Curtis, thank you. Megan, thank you. Thank you. Listen for me on K How Radio at 6:30 KHOW. Check out the Independence Institute, Independence Institute, O R G. See you in jail. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.